please rise and join in the call to worship. We come this morning to worship together. When we make crafts to share with our families. We are one scattered in When we play and talk to, with our friends. We are one scattered in When we eat together after church. We are one scattered in When we help with worship. Please join me in the opening prayer. Amazing God, we open our hearts, minds, and souls to you in prayer this morning. Thank you for your blessings of and love. I invite you to uh, turn to your hymnals or the screen and let us sing together our first hymn, a hymn selected by our children, our youth, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
Education Sunday, as you may have heard. Um, we have a wonderful, wonderful ed team here, and there are a number of people here who are part of it. Um, before we go any further in the service, I want to take a minute to thank the teachers who have been coming consistently every week to help us. Um, it, upstairs with Miss Callista and the older kids, fourth through seventh grade, is Miss Lee. Miss Lee is Miss Callista's helper. Miss Lee, are you here? Yep, there she is. Hi, Miss Lee. And I want to thank her. I have a gift for you if you'd like to come up and receive it. Um, Miss Lee has been wonderful with her presence and love and all of the wisdom she brings to that class, and we are so grateful that she has been able to join us. Um, I, yes, please. I don't think she's here today, but Miss Nan has been the helper in the K through four class, and that class is a bundle of energy, and we are so wonderfully lucky to have her um, and her kindness and patience there. Downstairs in the nursery with the infants and toddlers, in the back of the room, you can see the amazing Miss Malia and Miss Rand. Malia and Rand are so wonderful and loving with all of the little kids, and it's a joy every time I walk into the nursery and see them, and we are so grateful to have them down there. Thank you, Miss Malia. Thank you, Miss Rand. All right. Thank you to all of our wonderful teachers. And also, um, I don't have individual thanks for you, but for every single parent who has stepped in to help out on the days we've needed extra hands, I want to thank all of you for your commitment, for bringing your kids, and for being such an important part of our program. All right, so um, we like to take this Sunday as a, as a moment to also honor some of the people in our congregation who have graduated um, and kind of recognize their hard work and completion um, of their degree. So um, when I say your name, if you'd like, we have um, a small gift for you if you want to come up or a member of the person's family to uh, get the gift, that would be great. Um, so first, we have John Bastide, who graduated from Norfolk County Agricultural High School this year. So congratulations, John. <laughs> We also have uh, Chris and MJ's daughter, Amber, who is graduating with her associate's degree this year from Amber Muller Bristol Community College. She studied behavioral and social sciences. Congratulations to Amber and her family. Um, don't know if they're here, but we also have uh, Robbie Montanaro, who graduated from Bates College this year. Congratulations to Robbie. Um, also, I don't know if they're here, but uh, Ryan Tujin um, graduated from RPI this year. Um, congratulations to him. Uh, Florencia Rodi graduated with her bachelor's this year from Simmons College. Congratulations for Florencia. Um, and Gary's daughter, Shira, who just graduated from NYU this past year. And then uh, Sarah Kohlenbrander, just this past week, got her Master's of Education from Harvard University. Congratulations to all of our graduates and all the people who have helped them through all this hard work. All right, there's one final group of, of wonderful people we want to recognize. Um, when we welcome a new student to our Sunday school program, either because they've aged into the program as kindergartners or because they've joined this, this church from somewhere else, we like to recognize them and make sure that they have their very own Bible to read from. And today we're going to celebrate the welcoming of these uh, new kids into our program. And they're going to read the scripture to us from their, their maybe very first Bible. Um, so 
The first person I'd like to call up to receive a Bible is Thomas. <laughs> Thomas is going to read. And you're going to read from the book of Jeremiah. I know the plans I have in mind for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace, not disaster, to give you a future filled with hope. When you call me and come and play to me, I will listen to you. When you search for me, yes, search for me with all your heart, you will find me. The next is Cora Waller. We go. We're going we're to pass on Cora for now. We might come back to her. Brandon? Brandon, are you ready? Brandon is reading from 1 Chronicles chapter 28. Be strong and courageous. David said to his son Solomon, get to work. Don't be afraid. Or just courage. Because the Lord God, my God, is with you. He'll neither let you down nor leave you before all the work for the service of the Lord's temple is done. Natalie. Hi, Natalie. Are you ready? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. There is no law against things like this. All right, thank you so much to all of our wonderful uh, Sunday School students and all of the hard work they've put in this year. And thank you to you, Annie, and to Callista, and again to all the volunteers who have done such an awesome job over the course of the year. It hasn't been that uh, easy because, uh, as all of you remember, or many of you uh, may have heard, that we had a staff person here with us and we're searching hard for a new one. But when um, Charisse left at the beginning of August last year, it was Annie and Callista and others who had to step into those uh, big shoes so that we can continue with our ministry of Christian education with our, our youngest. So we're so grateful uh, for their commitment and their tirelessness uh, for this effort. Let's uh, stand if, yes, please. Let's stand and sing together our next hymn, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus.
like to invite uh, all the children that are here this morning to come up and have a seat with me. Sorry, no letter bag today. No Scrabble tiles today. We're going to do something a little bit different. So I'm glad that you're all here for a special Sunday. And I just wanted to give you an opportunity to share with me uh, the message for today. And I wanted to say thank you to the readers, those who received their Bibles today and shared a few special words with us. And so I want to just go back to a couple of those verses. Come on up. There's room for everybody. So I want to just go back to uh, Thomas. Where's Thomas? Right here. Oh, there you are. I'm sorry. Thomas, I wanted to, I wanted, can I talk to Thomas for a second? Yeah. Thomas, I want to thank you for uh, sharing that Bible lesson with us. And I wanted to ask you about um, a couple of things that you said, uh, actually you read. And uh, the first sentence says, uh, I have my plans for you. Remember saying that? When God was saying to Jeremiah, Jeremiah was this old prophet. You remember that? He said, I have plans for you. Yeah. And did you know that God has plans for you too? Yeah. yeah. He has plans for everybody. Has plans for everybody, right? Right. Has plans for every single buddy. Everybody here, God has a plan for. We may not. Do you know what God's plans are for you when you're 32 years old? No, you don't. No, none of us know what our plan, God's plans are for us. And even tomorrow, we may be surprised with God's plans, right? How do you like, do you like that idea that, that to, to believe that God has a plan for you? Thomas, do you like that? Does that feel good? Today, good. Yes. Today in the morning, God gave us a plan for fog. For fog. Yeah, yeah, yeah we woke up and there was fog, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was yesterday. Yeah, Does, how about on this side? Is uh, what do you think about God having plans for you? It was colder today than it was the other day. Yeah, yeah. So God's plans get involved with the weather. How about something else? Let's see, Brandon. Brandon, where are you? There you are. You read a few words that really made me think too, and I wanted to ask you about. What does it mean to be strong and courageous? When you think of being strong, what do you think? What do you think of? You think of God? Okay. I thought maybe you thought of your little brother Spider-Man. No? Where is he? Hannah, where's your little brother? He's not here? He's back there? Okay. And what about courageous? Do you know what that mean that word means, Brandon? To have courage? Can you help out your, your little brother, Hannah? What does it mean to be courageous? Uh, it's, it's in the category of bravery. It's in the category of bravery, right. Yeah, what does it mean to be brave? It means that you... To have courage. That you shouldn't have to do stuff that you shouldn't really do if you're alone. Oh, okay. So it, it means not to be afraid, right? Not to be afraid to do what God is asking you to do, right? To be to be fr to be brave, to be courageous. Right, right. And there's another word here, majestic. Cora, her Bible reading, and she was going to share it with us, uh, but she she got her Bible. It's marked there for her to look at in the future. But it means majestic. What's majestic mean? Does anybody know what that word? Mysterious and beautiful. Yeah, yeah. What is it? A beautiful thing, majestic, right? Majestic. Right, majestic right. Bird. A majestic bird, good example. So we're thinking about these words that are coming from the Bible that are for us. But they're just words, right, until, until somebody teaches us about their meaning and how we can understand it. That's why it's so important for us to say thank you to our Sunday school teachers, because whether you, whether you think it or not, God has a plan for you and your Sunday school teachers throughout life. You're going to remember your Sunday school teachers as time goes on. Matter of fact, I want to show you something that I brought. 
They're ancient documents. Ancient documents. Ancient documents. Yes, that's right. How ancient? Well, this is my baptismal certificate, right? This goes back way back to 1955. Right, right. Well, actually, I'm, 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 it, it, this baptismal certificate, right, when I was baptized, was June 10th, 1956. I'll be celebrating my birthday, my baptismal birthday, next week on Pentecost. Right, yes, thank you. My bab It's not my birth birthday, it's my baptismal birthday. And when I got baptized, I also, the church, the Methodist church gave me a little card. We don't do these anymore, but it was called, it's a, what's called the cradle roll department. We don't have a cradle roll department here, but back in the old days, there was a cradle roll department that welcomed new baptized babies. And it was my certificate of membership in a church. Now, I want to show you all a signature right here. You see this signature right here? No. No. Nope. It's the name of Florence B. Pomeroy. Okay? Now, Florence Pomeroy was a member of the church way back in 1956. And she welcomed me into the church when I was baptized. Florence became my Sunday school teacher for many years. She became a friend. And when I became a pastor, she was very, very happy for me. We stayed in touch. We were always visiting with each other when we could, even though I was moving in different places. But she became sick, and she lived into her 90s, right? And not only did she sign my baptismal certificate, she was part of my life for over 50 years. And she wrote me this letter. Here's her handwriting again, very different than it was when she signed my baptismal certificate. And this is one of the last letters that I got from her, right? It wasn't shortly thereafter that she went on to be with God. But she was always in my life. Now, what, is, what am I telling you this story? Well, I'm telling you this story because people in the church always will remember us. And even when I went into to study to become a pastor, a church member gave me this Bible. And here is his name and his wife's name. And they signed it for me. And they dated it. They were so happy that I was going to study to become a minister. They wanted to be part of my life as they had been part of my life for a really long time. And of course, I want to show off my first Bible, right? You, some of you got your first Bible. Here's my first Bible, Bible, right? Now I have two Bibles. Now you have two. That's that. good. So this one was given to me in 1964, and it's signed by Reverend William Valentine Jr. Now I tell you about that pastor because he was the pastor that helped me, even though I was very little, decide that I wanted to be a pastor. So I want you to look out with me. You might want to stand up if you can. I want you to stand up, and I want you to look. Go ahead, stand up. And I want you to look at all the people in your church family. You see them? Now, I want you to remember their faces. I want you to find out their names if you don't know. I want you to recognize all these people as part of your family. Yeah, yeah, part of your family who love you and care for you, and they want you to grow in the church. They want you to have an experience like they may have had when they were younger or a young adult. They want you to know God's love, and they want you to be part of this family, this community. And they also want you to know that you're precious to the community, but most importantly, they want you to know something you probably already know, that you're precious to God. Now, this is a church building, right? But we, the people, are the church. And what's most important to all of us, no matter what, is who we are, God's people, and our relationship to one another. 
So your participation today in church is just the beginning. It's not anything that we're doing just because you're kids. It's what we're doing because who you are and who we are and how happy we are to have you here. Now, I can't guarantee you this, but there may be somebody in this church who you're going to remember for a long time, who said something to you, did something with you to encourage you. You're pointing to somebody. Who is that? Grandma Celia, right, right. Those are, see, you already have one. You and Annalisa already have a grandmother who's guiding you along the way. And there are others, they're parents, there are friends. But there's sometimes they're complete strangers that will come along and continue to support us and remember you. And there may even be somebody here, believe it or not, when you're in college, might even write you a letter and say, Dear Hannah, I hope you're well in college. We miss you. We love you. We're praying for you. Things like that happen in the family. So thank you so much for participating this Sunday. Congratulations to those that receive Bibles. Thank you for the music. Are we going home now? Not yet. Pretty soon, though. Yeah, yeah. Okay, can you hold on till snacks? Starving. You're starving, okay. You can go back to your seats, and thank you so much for coming up and being with me. Don't worry, I'm not going to start preaching. <laughs> I'm tempted, but I'm not going to. I'll try to resist the spirit as much as I can. I just wanted to say once again, though, it, it is a special time to have our children not only in worship, but participating in the leadership of worship. You're, many of you are familiar with the Bible story of Jesus telling his disciples to get out of the way of the children, allow them to come forward. We, we often use that as an entry point into children's ministry. But I firmly believe as a community of faith, as a family, how we act, how we behave, the seeds that we plant, the words that we speak, and the actions that we take are God's transformative works. And so children are equal partners in the ministry of Jesus Christ. It's up to us adults uh, to deploy and employ them, to educate them, to train them. Uh, I don't say anything about the children being the future. No, the children are now. We can't control the future, we can't control the past, but we can control now. And so the hard work that goes into the ministry of Christian education for children is an investment in now, in their lives. And I am very confident that those children that were with me somewhere down the line in 10, 15, 20, 50 years will say, I remember Ms. So-and-so or Mr. So-and-so or whoever. And I remember what he or she said, just like I do and you do, those seeds of the gospel that were planted in good soil that enabled a child at one time to make an adult decision about a career, about a relationship, about a resistance, about an acceptance, whatever it is down the road, a link to the gospel because of you or me or someone else led them, shepherded them along the way. So let us pray together as a community. Again, keeping in mind uh, the children that are with us and the children that are not. Let us pray for children that are suffering in mind, body, or spirit. And let us pray together for those that we name at this point in time in the service. So I invite you to join me by lifting up any prayer concerns, any celebrations or thanksgivings. Let us pray. Lord, we bow our heads and quiet our minds and open our hearts to those who have been named before you. We pray for Christopher, for Buggy, for Marty, for Jenny and Carol, 
for Cecilia and her family. We give thanks for the hard work of our Christian educators, for Annie and Callista. We give thanks for our community of faith and how we live together and serve together. It is a blessing, O oh Lord, to be in this holy place and this holy time. As we pray for the distant places that are in great pain and struggling. Once again, O oh Lord, the echoes of violence and untamed hate fill our hearts as we receive the news and we struggle with the pain and the sorrow that comes with the shootings that have been taking place with much, much too much frequency. It's not of your will or your way. And so we pray, O oh Lord, for the people of Virginia Beach and all those who are reminded of the horror and the sorrow that they have gone through. We pray that you will find ways for those in power to make differences and that we too will be invited and called into ways to make a difference so that these acts of violence and hate will not capture our hearts and break them as they do. Be with us, O oh Lord, on this day as we remember and claim those who have guided us into this holy time and this holy place to be part of a church. Let us not forget their hard work and the ways that have shaped us into the road of discipleship. Be with us now, O Lord, as we prepare to offer ourselves and our gifts and to receive your gifts in the sacrament of Holy Communion. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us now offer ourselves and our gifts to the ministry of Jesus Christ.
join me in our prayer and dedication and thanksgiving. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to be your beloved community. and thanks, how good it is to join in your feast of love. In unity with God, Jesus set a table for all to enjoy. O Holy One, satisfy hungry our hearts with your life-giving spirit, renew and nourish us for the work of Jesus. And today especially we remember when Jesus invited children to sit at his feet, saying, let the children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. So now we receive the gift of Jesus as we acknowledge his love for all children of all ages. In unity with Jesus and one another, we taste and see God's love. Sing to God, God. Sing, sing praises, praises to, to the Lord. Lord. Out of God's love for all creation, Jesus joined his heart with the hungry and tired, Jesus extended his hands to the sick and the dying. Jesus loved the forgotten and despised. And the Lord has called us to do the same. Let us serve with compassion and work for justice. Blessed are we who live in the light of God's promise. Glory, Glory to God, God, our creator and sustainer. The word of Jesus is ours to share. The sacrifice of Jesus is ours to receive. Blessed are we who gather together. We thank, thank you, loving God. Redeemer. Let us remember how Jesus made God's love visible. He lift a loaf of bread while thanking God, broke the bread open to share it with his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Jesus, with gratitude, lifted the cup and he held it up to God to give thanks, saying, drink from this, all of you. Know that this is God's sign of promise and forgiveness. And so today, this morning, we gather, all of us, siblings of the Lord, come to this table to remember God's acts of justice. We bow to the name above all names and confessing with one voice that Jesus Christ is Lord and proclaiming to heaven and earth these words, Christ, Christ has risen, Christ, Christ, Christ has risen, risen. Christ, Christ will risen. come again. Lord, send your spirit to bless these gifts of your harvest, grain from the fields and fruit from the vine. And may these simple symbols of your love unite us with Jesus. And may they fill us, O oh Lord, with your love and your mercy and strengthen us for the building up of your kingdom here on earth. Amen. And hear us, O oh Lord, as we pray together, blending our voices in unity, the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, Amen. who art Amen. in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we give those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. to extend signs of Christ's peace and love to one another as we gather here in this place and time. Let us return to our seats as we prepare to receive these gifts from God.
And so because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which has been broken is a sharing in the body of Christ, and the cup over which we have given thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. And the sharing of Holy Communion, the sharing of the bread and the cup is for all. This is grape juice, a welcoming taste for all. This is bread that does have gluten in it, not a welcoming bread for all. But please, come, all who are here, to receive these gifts. You need not be a member of this church, or any church for that matter, but one who comes with an open heart and has named and proclaimed Christ as his or her Lord. This is our time to come together to one table to be nourished and strengthened for the unity of God's work in the world. So come, come and feast together. You're welcome to be ushered up as the ushers give you notice to come forward. Let us eat, share in the communion. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this feast that you have offered to us. And we pray that the strength that we receive from it, the encouragement, the inspiration, the way that you work through our lives to make your will and your way known in the world. May we remember this feast, this moment, as one that will move us forward on the path of discipleship, the path that we walk together with you through the hands and hearts of those who accompany us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us uh, close with our last hymn, Lord of the Dance. Again, all these hymns uh, are hymns that the children have on their hearts. Uh, they wanted us to uh, sing them together. And so we're going to sing the, the first and the last verse of the Lord of the Dance uh, this morning. So let us stand and sing together if you're comfortable doing so. Thank you. be seated. I'd like all the children to come back up here with me for one moment. All the children, come on up real quick. Way out. Okay, children, stand up. Stand up up here. All up. Can you fit up here with me? Uh, maybe. Okay. Now, at this part in the service, we, it's not saying goodbye. It's saying go out into the world and be disciples. So what do you want us to do when we go out into the world? What do you think God would want us to do? Anything? One word? One word? Love. Love. Okay, what else? Any other words that you want to? What's that? Have brave. Be brave. Have faith. Dream. Okay. Dream. Okay, any others? All right. So I want you to put your right hand up. Everybody put your right hand up like this. You're going to bless the congregation. Okay? And I'll say the words. Brothers and sisters in Christ, go forth into the world to be brave, to love, to serve, to be friends of the friendless, and to accompany all the children of this world 
as they seek peace and justice. And most importantly, love your neighbor as yourself. And most, most importantly, love God. Amen. Thank you.